Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. This is your second session looking at the balance sheet of a company. In the previous session, you looked at what a very simple balance sheet looks like. You also know what are the different components of a balance sheet, assets, liabilities, and shareholders equity. And you also know what makes up assets and what makes up liabilities and how to read a basic balance sheet. Now, you're probably wondering what is this visual doing up on your screen? It has a logo of Lehman Brothers, the famous investment bank in New York, uh, or was an investment bank in New York. Uh, you have this picture of this guy, you know, he's clearly disappointed that the stock markets are just crashing. Uh, these visuals essentially represent what happened in the whole financial crisis of 2008. And, and the reason I have this visual here today is because I wanted to explain to you how critical the whole balance sheet is to a company and what role that played in the, in the 2008 market crash. Uh, on Wall Street and within financial circles, the whole recession is essentially called a balance sheet recession. And I'll show you why it's called a balance sheet recession. I'll show you what happened. So a, a brief timeline of what happened was back in 2008, it all started off with this investment bank called Bear Stearns. It was a legendary investment bank. Bear Stearns filed for bankruptcy. The company collapsed and JP Morgan ended up buying Bear Stearns for I think $2 a share or something. And, and I think finally they settled on $8 or $10 a share. And then a few months later, this uh, extremely prestigious and storied investment bank, Lehman Brothers, collapsed as well. And, and one thing led to the other. More banks, more financial institutions collapsed. The American government had to finally intervene. They're still intervening, and um, that crisis spread to Europe. It's beginning to spread to Asia, and people are concerned this just might be a world recession. And how did this all start off? It all started off with companies mismanaging their balance sheet. This is what happened. Uh, as usual, we're going to you know, go straight into Excel. Uh, this is a financial crisis of 2008. Lehman Brothers. Let's just get that spelling right there. Lehman Brothers. What happened in Lehman Brothers? Now Lehman Brothers, they went and took a loan. You know, all companies take a loan, so there's nothing wrong with taking a loan. Let's just say Lehman Brothers took a five billion dollar loan. It was probably um, much higher actually, but for our purposes, we're just going to say Lehman Brothers took a five billion dollar loan and then they went and bought assets. They went and bought assets, a specific kind of assets called mortgaged backed securities. We won't go into the details of what a mortgage backed security is, but for now, they bought an asset called mortgage backed securities for the same five billion okay they took a five billion dollar loan and then they bought a five billion dollar in asset there's nothing wrong with that companies do this all the time dominoes will go and take a loan for five crores and they'll go invest it in opening restaurants with five crores companies do it all the time to grow their business but in this special special case what happened was since lehman brothers is essentially a trading company and investment bank they were hoping that this five billion dollars in assets will actually grow to 10 billion or 15 billion or 20 billion in a few years and then they can sell the assets and make a profit of 10 12 billion dollars and then just pay off this five billion dollar loan and they will still have a net profit of like uh, I don't know seven eight billion dollars based on how much uh, you know profits uh, they actually made but the trouble was five billion dollar in loan and $5 billion in assets. Lehman Brothers expected that the assets would go up. What actually happened is that the value of these assets went down. Yeah. So this $5 billion actually became $1 billion. Or in, 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 a, in a lot of cases, it became $200 million. So the value of the assets went down 40%, 50%, sometimes 80%, 90%. And in a lot of cases, the assets were worthless. So $5 billion just poof, just destroyed from your account. But the problem is your assets went down, but your liability is still there. Who, the Hoover you borrowed $5 billion from, 
he is waiting to get the $5 billion back. He doesn't care if your assets went back or went up or went low. He expects his $5 billion plus his interest or whatever term Lehman Brothers agreed on him. Now, because the assets went down, Lehman Brothers has no money to, it has nothing to sell and make a profit and pay this guy back. So you see the first thing that's happening here is Lehman Brothers is collapsing because its assets went down. The second thing that's happening is this whole whoever maybe this is another bank maybe this is like JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs they probably lend Lehman Brothers this money they're not getting back their money because Lehman Brothers has no money to pay back that company now that company probably similarly owes money to some other company and they're not getting it back because Lehman Brothers didn't give it to them and they didn't give it to them and similarly that company is probably get, get, getting money from another company so it's a whole vicious cycle and that is essentially what led to the collapse of 2008 yeah Companies borrowed a lot of money in the hope that they will buy assets and the value of the assets will go up. Or what essentially happened is the value of the assets crashed to $200 million, 10% of the equity. So they had no money to pay back. That's essentially what led to the crisis. So essentially what happened was the American government, in all its generosity, intervened and they told Lehman Brothers, I mean Lehman Brothers collapsed, but other investment banks, they told them, hey, hold on, I realize you have all this, you know, useless assets on your balance sheet. So let me buy it, you know. So I am going to give you cash. Uh, let's say if you have assets for $5 billion, the, mar the market is probably going to, is telling you that those assets are worth only $1 billion. But forget about it. I'm going to pay you almost the value of that asset. I'm going to pay you $4.5 billion in cash so you can clear these, you know, toxic, uh, invaluable assets off your balance sheet. Poof. Now you see what happens is a much healthier balance sheet. Lehman Brothers owes $5 billion to a, 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 a lender and the government just gave it $4 billion, $4.5 billion and the remaining $500 million they can somehow, you know, do, you know, put some business and, uh, you know, pay it back. But you saw the previous case what happened? If the government had not intervened, this investment bank is stuck with a $5 billion loan and an asset that is worth only $200 million. So the bank has to come up with $4.8 billion to pay back that loan. And that's next to important. I mean, these are obviously small numbers we're talking about. But when it actually came to real examples on Wall Street, it was the order of $8 billion, $20 billion, $30 billion. Now, the numbers are ridiculous. Morgan Stanley, I, I think, lost $8 billion. Uh, Lehman Brothers, people are still calculating how much money was lost because of that. Uh, I mean, estimates are at 25, 35, 40 billion, uh, but you know, you, you'll never know. So that's essentially why this was called a balance sheet recession. Okay, this was why this was called a balance sheet recession because companies, smart people, grossly mismanaged what the value of their assets are going to be at some time in the future. Now similarly, that brings us back to the focus of our this session is the focus of this session is going, actually going to be to get into the details of a balance sheet and we have realized before that the best way to understand about understand a financial statement better is to actually look at a real balance sheet which we will do by looking at the Domino's balance sheet and we'll also uh, get familiar with this, you know, fundamental basic concept on building a balance sheet called double entry balancing. And we'll go over what both those are. And you'll better understand this whole financial crisis when you're done with this session. So, uh, you, you, you know, you, you again remember that, you know, going back here, your this is your income statement that we built a few classes back. The, this talks about the operations of a company, but doesn't really give you this, the financial situation of a company, the cash balances and things like that. And you obviously remember this simple balance sheet that we built. This balance sheet is actually talk, gives you about the full financial snapshot of a company, the cash, how much inventory the company owns, the, how much money the company has to give other people, uh, so on and so forth. Now, and, and, and you know, I, I keep insisting there's only a simple balance sheet. So we're going to go into a real one, a, a, the Domino's balance sheet. Where is, there it is, okay? And we're going to see how different is this and what is the difference. You know, you're already beginning to see, oh my God, this looks nothing like the balance sheet Binny taught me last class. What is happening? Patience, we'll go through this and you'll understand it's not that different, okay? 
Uh, let's let me keep the other one also open for quick comparison right here. Okay, so let's start off here. And to begin with, you remember I said a balance sheet is the status of a company as of a specific date. Right here, you see, as of March 31st, 2005, these are the balances of the company. And that goes on from 05, 06, 07, 08, 09. Excuse me. So for five years, um, the company has been kind enough to lay it right next to each other. So it's helpful in our, uh, you know, our, our certificate program here. So let's take the first one. Gross block. And once again, these numbers are in millions. So the best way to read this is, this is 609 million rupees. Uh, 609 million rupees is about 60 crores, 60, 61 crores almost, 60 crores, 67 crores, 85 crores. Uh, that is the best, that, that's how you should uh, read this. All right. So gross block is really nothing but uh, all the, literally everything the company owns in terms of hard assets like furniture, ovens, uh, let's see, you know, you know, like machinery, inventory, all these things that we said non-current assets, that is what Domino's is calling gross block in their whole balance sheet. Okay, And then there's this term here saying less depreciation. We have not covered that. We'll come back to that later. But as of now, just, just think of this as gross block. And then from the, from the value of the equipment, they're actually subtracting how old is that equipment. So it's worth how much today. They're subtracting that. But let's forget that for now. Let's come back to that later. Just focus on gross block. So 60 crores, 67 crores, and you know the, the 170 crores, this has been just going up. Then let's look at this line right here. This looks interesting, right? It says capital work in progress, including capital advances. What that essentially means is, uh, apart from all the uh, you know equipment and all that that Domino's owns, Domino's is also expanding like crazy. We saw last class that their revenues were growing at 50%, right? You remember this? I'm going to go back to that income statement of Domino's. Uh, and there, the income statement of Domino's, there you go, right? And uh, no, actually, yeah, there it is. So we, we saw how Domino's was growing at 50%, 33%. And the only way the company is growing that, that, fast is because they're expanding the company super fast. They're building a lot of new stores and, and all that is happening. So that is the capital work in progress, money being spent on new stores, new equipment, new furnitures, and, and, and all of that thing. That is that thing right here. And that is again a non-current asset. It's a fixed asset because, you know, furniture and stores and electricity you know, light fixtures and interiors, you can't sell it in two days and get your cash back. They're invested, they're fixed, it, they're not very liquid. That's that's that. Uh, we will skip this again, this line statement, because that ties to this thing called depreciation, which we'll cover in a couple of sessions. And, and that, and there you go, that is the combination of all their fixed assets, and that is your number right there. Then you come down to their current assets. Uh, we, we spoke uh, last session where we said current assets are nothing but the liquid assets, assets that the company can sell right now. Pick up a phone call and say sell that and you'll, you'll get your cash in like a day or two days or something like that. Inventories. You know, Domino's probably has one week or two weeks inventory of cheese, oil, uh, dough, vegetables, and chicken, and uh, I don't, I, whatever other ketchup and all of those things that Domino's sells. They're storing it in some godown, and that's on your balance sheet. Now let's go and see: Did we have that on our balance sheet? Well, we actually put. Uh, inventory in our non-current assets. Now that really depends what kind of a company you are. If you are, if you are like a, uh, you know, I, I guess, uh, you know, what kind of inventory it is. If it's a long-term inventory, if you're going to use it much later, it probably goes in non-current assets, or sometimes it stays in your current assets. Okay, um, that that's inventory, and then this whole thing called sundry debtors. That essentially is. The amount of money other people owe Domino's, you know, maybe Domino's delivered, uh, you know, a, a bunch of pizzas and people are yet to pay them for some things. Or, you know, there could be many reasons why different people owe money to Domino's. Maybe they, they invested in some smaller company and they have to get some portion of the revenue out of them back. Uh, all of that is what is called sundry debtors. Cash and bank balance. We saw that in our last session. Cash and bank balance is nothing but 
um, the amount of cash you have in your bank, the amount of money you have in your stocks, your fixed deposit, and, and, and all of that. Uh, once again, loans and advances is again a current asset. Uh, loans and advances is really big amounts of money that people owe dominoes. You know, sundry debtors are essentially small amounts of money you know, that people owe dominoes. Uh, loans and advances is probably dominoes is uh, given a loan to one of their suppliers. Maybe, maybe the, the supplier, the vendor from where Domino's buys its uh, vegetables or its uh, uh, ketchup, uh, Dom Domino's probably, uh, you know, to finance their operations, Domino's probably gives them some kind of advance and gets his goods and, and that is probably what is under this whole loans and advances. And all this put together is the current assets. You know, essentially, this is the the money that is liquid for Domino's. The Domino's, you know, with a couple of phone calls, can get this money back into the company. Now we go to the liabilities. The first one Domino's has here is called secured loans. We know that loan that is the company owes somebody that is called a liability. Now, what is a secured loan? A secured loan is nothing but a loan that has got a guarantee. Maybe maybe Domino said, okay, my head office in Delhi, I don't know where the head office is, but my head office is in Delhi, I'm gonna pledge my head office, please give me 15 pros. That's called a secured loan, where you're pledging something, you're pledging a tangible property to get a loan. Unsecured loan, you know, that's been going down, but they also seem to have unsecured loans where you're getting loans, small amounts though, but you don't have to pledge anything to, to get that money. And these are all uh, under, current liabilities and provisions. So you see they're not really broken down their liabilities as current liabilities and non-current liabilities. I suspect a lot of these provisions are probably non-current liabilities. They've just clubbed it together here into current liabilities and uh, and provisions. Provisions are typically uh, you know, money that the company keeps aside for some kind of uh, expected uh, uh, expenses like some kind of tax expense that the, the company has to pay in three months the company will keep aside that money and that probably uh, goes under this whole provisions okay and then we finally come to the last part of um, this balance sheet which is the share capital the share capital is really nothing but the, the, another term for the share capital is called paid up capital yes P A I D U P paid up capital and that is really nothing but the amount of money promoters and investors have pumped into the company so as of now it looks like 500 no, sorry 58 crores has been invested into the company by the and that's why this number doesn't change they probably invested 58 crores sometime before and after that the company has been funding its operations through its internal internal uh, profits and by borrowing money and maybe sometime initially before uh, 2006 uh, to, through a period of time roughly about 58 crores was invested in the company that, that, that was the reserves are really nothing but uh, every year when the company makes a profit now for example let's go to this income statement right you see here every year when Domino's makes a profit the, the management of the company can decide if they want to give those profits away as dividends to the shareholders or should they save up the profits for future use. This statement basically says the company which is Domino's is at least partially saving up its profits in what is called reserves. So you know there's probably some upcoming expense for you know 200 stores opening up or some kind of expense that Domino's is anticipating and they are saving up this money as reserves. And this is actually one, you know, very popular way where you can analyze how efficiently a company is being done. You basically, you know, figure out is a company uh, retaining their earnings, are they keeping the money to themselves, or are they giving out to the shareholders? Then you figure out, okay, if they, if, if if Domino's is actually keeping the money to themselves, then they better make good use of that money, right? You can't keep money to yourself and your business can't be going down. Your business better be going up. And that is fortunately happening in Domino's case, uh, but that's one, one good way to see how efficiently a company is being done. In that if net income is being retained by the company, it's being kept by the company, then the revenue should be going up, you know, pretty significantly based on how much they're, they're, they're retaining. So now, uh, you know, what we're going to do is we've almost spent 20 minutes in the session. So we are going to wind up this session right now. And uh, I also said we'll discuss the whole double entry bookkeeping. We're going to discuss that in the next session. So in this session, 
uh, at the end of the session you have a fairly good idea what this economic collapse was all about why did that happen why is it a balance sheet recession you also know how to read a real company's balance sheet how to look at trends in the balance sheet and uh, and all of that thank you very much i'll see you uh, very soon at the next session